Hi there, I'm Donna Wolf from Nastasia.com. Today I'll show you this Tunisian crochet full stitch, which is easy to make and doesn't curl. I'm using worsted weight yarn and normally I use a five millimeter H hook, but tip number one to prevent curling in Tunisian crochet is to use a larger hook than you normally would. Tip number two is start your first row with the traditional crochet stitch, like single crochet, chain 21 or any other number. Skip the first chain and make one single crochet in each stitch across. This Tunisian crochet full stitch is also sometimes called the Tunisian crochet mesh stitch. I now have 20 single crochet stitches on this row. If you were planning on changing colors, it's best to change it on the last stitch. So I'm going to pull out my stitch and finish it instead with the new color. This will be the only time we turn our work in this stitch. We're going to draw up loops. And tip number three is to draw up loops nice and tall. By doing so, you are creating loops that have a little more give to them, so they won't curl forward from the stretch. Continue with this across the row. At the end, you'll have a total of 20 loops on your hook. And before moving on, it's always best to count them. Now we're going to do a return pass by starting with the chain one. And then take off loops using the Tunisian simple stitch method. We'll take off loops in groups of two until we are left with one loop on our hook. You might have to push the loops up a bit every now and then. Continue taking them off in groups of two. At the end, your foundation rows will look something like this. Now we're going to move on to the actual pattern. So for row one, forward pass, we'll insert our hook in the space between the vertical bars. And we will insert our hook in the very first space. And draw up a tall loop. Continue drawing up loops across this row, going in the space in between the vertical bars. At the end of row one, we have two choices. We can either place our hook in the very last space to make it easy for ourselves. However, if you need a straighter edge on this side, you can omit the space and place the last stitch within the last vertical bar. The most important thing is to count, to ensure you have 20 loops on your hook. No more and no less. Now for row one's return pass, we chain one. Then we take off loops in groups of two, just as we did before with our foundation row. Our return passes will always be the same in this pattern. As you'll soon see, it's where we place our starting and ending stitches that will change on every other row. And since I never cut off the gray yarn yet, I'm going to bring it back up and use it to finish the last group of two. For row two's forward pass, we're going to skip that very first space and instead insert our hook into the second space, then proceed to draw up loops. At the end of row two, we need to draw up a loop in the very last space. And we must draw up another loop in the very last vertical bar. Check one more time until you get the hang of this stitch. Ensure there are 20 loops on your hook. Then proceed with row two's return pass. The chain one followed by taking loops off in groups of two. You can see what it looks like. At the end, feel free to switch colors or just keep going for a few more rows with the same color. From now on, we just repeat rows one and two for the pattern. I'll do a row one. And that one starts in the very first space. Draw up loops from there. Row one ends by only drawing up a loop either in the last space or in the last vertical bar, but not both. With row two, we skip the first space and we draw up loops in the second space and every other one. 
And at the end, we draw up loops in the very last space and in the vertical bar. And that's it. You can see how even just the single crochet row has prevented the typical curl you find in Tunisian crochet. And that's how I make the easy Tunisian crochet full stitch with no curl.